Hello, uh, this is Matthew Jasky here, and I'm going to show you the most incredibly awesome uh, little secret hack I found. Actually, it's not too secret, but I'll show you what it is in a moment. To getting phenomenally, uh, almost award-winning, beautiful pictures with my junky old uh, camera body. This is a Canon Rebel XT. I've had it since 2006. It is beat to death. I don't know if you can see it in there. Um, the buttons are worn down. Some of them don't even have their clicky anymore. Uh, the end of the uh, grip is worn off. Um, this camera has been used, abused, and well, it still works. And I hate to throw it away, but um, I love to take pictures and I don't like to compromise in terms of quality but I'm still able to get a lot of mileage out of this old body uh, using this uh, technique I found. And one thing, I, I guess I'll give it away, it's a lens that I freaking think is amazing. Uh, the lens that came with this was complete garbage. So I literally, uh, I didn't throw it away, I gave it away after I got the uh, camera and I've been using this other lens ever, ever since. Um, and again, I just would like to say that the lens that I picked out, I love taking pictures of the outdoors. I'm big into hiking and mountain biking and skiing and stuff like that. I think that this lens is about as good as it gets for that sort of activity and uh, capturing it to show your friends and uh, family. So without further ado, I'm going to show you uh, my secret lovely lens. Hey, so this is my Canon uh, 24 to 105 IS lens. Uh, I, I love this lens. You have no idea. Um, so this is a very expensive lens. I, well, reasonably expensive. You can get one of these for under a thousand dollars now. When I got it, it was uh, $1,300 and it was worth every penny. Um, now, I, I have to explain, I, I bought myself a Canon Rebel XT about six years ago and um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny using a really high-end lens like this L series lens with a little Rebel, but there couldn't be a better partnership when it comes to lens and camera body. Um, the Canon Rebel is uh, it's a very ca capable camera and a lot of people have them out there. But the problem with the camera, the Canon Rebel, is not the body. The, the problem is the, I have no good words for it, piece of junk lens that comes packaged with that camera. Uh, the camera is phenomenally capable, but with the junky little uh, 3.5 to I believe 5.5 uh, f-stop lens that comes with it, you can't take a picture that's any better than a cheap point-and-shoot camera. But when you mate a Rebel camera with this high-end L-series lens, you get uh, unbelievable photos. I'm going to post some of the photos below this video. There'll be a link where you can check them out. Uh, and they were all taken with a really cheap, by today's standard, very cheap, antiquated uh, Rebel camera that has been around for half, over half a century. Uh, now this lens, despite it's very old, it is still cutting edge. I've had this for oh, uh, probably four years now, and honestly, if you look closely at it, you would not be able to tell that this is not a new lens. The only thing you can recognize is there's a little wear where the hood mount uh, slides on, but that is it. Um, this is a cheap filter. I, I'll, I'll get into that uh, at another time. Um, but as for the lens, it is incredibly rugged. I honestly, I abuse this thing. It's around my neck um, while I hike up mountains. I've been up many, many mountains. I like to f take my photographs in national parks and stuff like that. Um, I've dropped it, uh, not on a hard surface. I wouldn't recommend dropping it on a hard surface, but I put it in my camera bag and then I literally throw my camera bag in the trunk of my car, uh, on my back seat, and uh, this lens is like new. Um, I have noticed one very small thing. Um, when it goes to focus, it, it does sound a little noisier than it did when I first bought the lens. 
but I don't think that's any uh, big issue. Um, the the um, zoom is very smooth and fluid, and it does tend to catch, like it won't let the, the zoom creep out. But if you're hiking for a long distance, the camera does like to flip around and uh, this, this will slide out. And for outdoor photography, just hiking and stuff like that, this is also my, photo, uh, my lens of choice. The reason being is, honestly, this is a fairly slow lens. It's an F4 lens versus the uh, 24 to 70 they make, which is an F2.8. Uh, uh, but when I'm outdoors and I'm shooting uh, nature photography, I never go down lower than an F4. I'm always um, stopped uh, somewhere around 10 to 22 um, stops, honestly. Um, and it, it takes unbelievable photos. And you still can at F4 get really, really good depth of field with this lens. Um, I suppose I could go on just about all day long talking about this thing. Uh, I'll show you where it mounts. Uh, my previous lens that came with the Rebel was a piece of junk. <laughs> it did not have this very, very uh, rugged metal mount here. And this, this is super high precision, seems like high tolerance, really good fit. I don't get any dirt or anything on my sensor while this is mounted. This is probably the riskiest thing here for getting dirt. I will have to take a cloth and clean it just because I had it exposed to the air. But other than that, uh, there's, there's a weather seal here. I have stuck my uh, lens and camera out in the rain and done time lapse, literally. And I, ne I mean, I never got any moisture inside the lens or anything like that. Uh, as a good precaution, if you have one of these, I would recommend uh, wrapping the lens or putting something above like an umbrella to keep it from getting too wet. But I have had this out in the water, literally. And I have no uh, moisture inside the lens assembly itself. Um, this is the front of the lens. And I do have this crappy UV filter on here, which actually doesn't hurt anything. It, it, it protects me from having to clean the lens itself. Uh, time and time again um, and if, in case I drop or scratch the front of the lens um, this this protects me but uh, on a quick note um, these cheap filters they're fine aside from you constantly have to be wiping it with a cloth because they collect dust and things like that which is no fun um, I guess uh, if you look at the, the lens cap, you can tell I have used this. Some of the lettering's a little worn down. But aside from that, like I said, it's almost impossible to tell. I've used this lens for almost half a century, and it's just like new. I, I do, I mean, I, I know if you went and purchased one of these, you would not regret it. I, I know you wouldn't regret it. This takes... Uh, spotless, stunning, jaw-dropping photos. Even an uh, amateur can take this, slap it on their, uh, their Rebel camera, their cheap Rebel camera, and get phenomenal photos. Now, a Rebel camera is not a full frame or a full, a full sensor. It's a, it's a cropped sensor is, I believe, what they call it. But this lens, if you decide to upgrade to a full uh, frame camera, such as the 5D, the Canon 5D, this lens is compatible with that. So moving forward, uh, this lens could last you 10, 15 years. Um, it's, it's not, it's not um, a stretch to say that. Um, and it's, it's a really good investment. It's actually a better investment than the body itself, in my opinion. Um, and I was actually, you know, I went on a trip with a friend who had this 24 to 70. And we were hiking through Banff and Jasper National Parks in uh, Canada, taking our photos. And honestly, this, this lens was far more flexible for that situation than his 24 to 70 was. Uh, his 24 to 70 does not have image stabilization. This does. Not that I was using it outside. I'll explain that in a minute. But um, he could not zoom in as much as I could which can be nice when you're uh, photographing scenes that are farther away. 
so it's a little more flexible and he could go, but he could go down to f 2.8 whereas i can only go down to f4 with this but then again when we're outside we never open the aperture lower than uh i think 7.1 um i can't remember that was about the the um fastest I had my aperture running many times I had it at f22 because I was trying to uh, blend a scene such as water flowing or um, get a little blur in the clouds so it kind of looks like a, a, a little um, three more three-dimensional and stuff like that um, so I, I really never did run this even at f4 and so it kind of kind of uh, defeats the purpose of having the faster, more expensive um, 24 to 70 lens from Canon. And again, I, I'm rambling on, but I, this is the lens to get if you're going to be doing any hiking or nature photography. Uh, a zoom lens, a really uh, uh, far-reaching telephoto zoom lens, such as the, I think it's a 70 to 200. My friend had that, and yeah, that was helpful. Um, he used it a handful of times, but most of the time uh, we were using this this type of lens for our photography. So uh, it's a little heavy, these lenses. I would recommend, I just recommend getting this lens. Uh, your body of choice, it, this works fantastically well with a Rebel. Uh, it, it works equally well with a Canon 5D, which is actually a better body, but um, if you want to look like a pro and take unbelievable photos, this lens with a Rebel is your cheapest uh, route to go. Um, I don't really think I have much else to say. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, post them below, and I will be more than happy to... Uh, answer them. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I also put a link to Amazon if you're interested in taking a closer look at the specs, uh, seeing what the pricing is. Uh, currently, I would not discourage you from buying one of these used. You can save a couple hundred bucks and uh, they hardly wear at all. You can tell this is a very old lens and it looks like new, um, the one you're looking at in this video. So. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching my video and uh, listening to me ramble on. I hope this was helpful and any camera questions you have in general about uh, this sort of Canon equipment, feel free to ask me. I've played with a ton of it. So uh, thanks much and I hope you have a great day.